An online media platform, Premium Times Nigeria, has decided to look into an aspect of the Nigerian healthcare sector by investigating medical referral kickback between some hospitals and medical laboratories. The reporter also identified lax regulation as the reason the fraudulent referral kickback scheme has become entrenched, making healthcare provision expensive and ineffective. And joining us live uh, to discuss this from Lagos is the journalist Nicolas Ibeque, who uncovered the fraud. Many thanks uh, again for joining us, Nicolas. Uh, thank you very much, Anita. Um, nice for having me. So help us break down the story. What did you find in your probe into the referral scheme? Well, um, I found out that um, doctors um, and um, diagnostic centers are basically colluding to rob Nigerians of um, money, 20%. Uh, the minimum. Some even goes. I, I, I mean, some go ahead. I mean, beyond twenty percent. So what it what it do is for every referral a doctor makes to a particular medical laboratory, twenty percent of the cost of the test that is done at the medical laboratory is paid back into the doctor's account. Um, basically, what that immediately says is that. Whatever you are paying at the, at the diagnosis center is 20% more than you should be paying. Because ideally, I mean, doctors are supposed to make referral and are not supposed to get any uh, kickback. Because what it means is that the final cost is, um, is um, sent back um, to the, to the um, person paying. And because about 90% of Nigerians, about 90% of Nigerians pay out of pocket, you know, 90% of the Nigerians pay out of pocket. It is basically, uh, mean, it, what it basically means is that 90% um, of Nigerians are paying more, 20% more than, 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 than they should. So what the investigation basically did was to, because this is well entrenched. The first thing I, I must say is that everybody seems to have a slight idea or have an idea that this is happening, but nobody has been able to investigate to see the extent, how deep is how. I mean, deeply ingrained this um, practice has been, I mean, over, over, over time. So, and nobody um, has gone to the extent of coming out with evidence to show that this is actually happening. Mm -hmm. There's one thing to, to think something happened or there's a rumor that something happens. So another thing to also come out with evidence to show that it actually happens. So what my investigation did was basically to go in and get the evidence, I mean, unimpeachable evidence, to show that this is actually what is happening, you know. Indeed. So I sent a lot of people uh, uh, to the diagnosis center posing as a doctor, and I uh, first thing they were asked for is my account number and all of that. And lo and behold, the twenty percent referral was were paid back uh, into my account. Interesting. In other parts of the world, such unethical behavior, you know, is penalized. And in your story, you wrote about how lax regulation in Nigeria has aided the, you know, this issue. Please tell us more about that. Yes, I mean, um, the one thing you hear most people say, and this is not about this issue, I mean, in particular. Uh, um, this is about many things that happen in this country. Is that people will tell you that, oh, the problem with Nigeria is not the absence of laws. We have, I mean, laws that check most of the corruption, most of the, most of the fraud you see around out there. There's several laws that check these things. But the fact is that regulate, regulators, people who are paid, people who are uh, by law, should, should keep a tab and make sure that these laws are upheld, are basically are either colluding with the people that they should be checking, or basically they've just gone to sleep, you know. So in Nigeria, there is a law against it. In fact, in one of those laws, they have a fine of up to 100,000 naira or and a five-year jail term if you are caught um, 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 stealing from a patient, if you are caught um, trying to take money from a patient illegally. There's a law about that. There's a law against that. It is written. It's a gazetted law. You know, but what we find is that the regulators are just gone to sleep. Nigeria Medical Council are basically, I mean, gone to sleep. I mean, for several years, actually, um, 
over almost two years, there was no board for the Nigerian Medical Council that should keep watch and watch doctors and punish doctors who indulge in this illegal act. That, I'm all illegal and unethical act. There was basically no law. There's also the, the I mean, the, the uh, council that check um, medical laboratories um, stuff. They don't even know. We, we had to send somebody from our office to the head office in Abuja after trying to reach them several, for several weeks without response. And somebody went to the office. And a lady, and one of, one of their staff, actually swore that it never happened, that this does not happen. This, this, this is strange, that it, it does not happen, and that there is no way doctors will collude with uh, laboratory uh, la laboratories to steal from the public. And this is something that we have investigated. We have proofs, we have money sent to us, we have contracts, because they will give you an MOU agreement and sign this contract and so and so, so, so for doing this, so and so amount of money will be paid back to you. So regulators have basically gone, 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 gone to sleep. Imagine since our story was um, uh, 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 published, regulators have not done anything. We had Real evidence, we actually did not even stop by providing this evidence. We also showed, we quoted part of the law that shows that this is basically illegal and it's not. I mean, a few weeks ago, I mean, a, an hospital chain in the US was fined $20 million by the US Department of Justice for referral fraud. Because one thing you should know is that referral fraud happens all over the world, you know. But the difference between what happens here and what happens in other parts of the world is that regulators there keep a tab on what is happening and the punish those that have caught one. Indeed, but yeah, indeed, Nicholas. Let's also talk about uh, the kickbacks for referring patients to be at uh, mm. to be treated at certain hospitals abroad. Does mm. your mm. investigation then mean that some referrals for mod medical tourism were not necessary for you know to preserve the health of such a patient, but was just a money making scheme for the doctors and the hospitals involved? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, according to the Ministry, the Ministry of Health, yearly Nigeria spent about a, a billion US dollars uh, on medical um, on medical uh, tourism um, every year. You can you can just know that if they if they pay as much as ten percent of the cost back to you, that means ten percent of that money goes back to either hospitals and uh, doctors who are making that. So there is an incentive. There is an incentive for people to refer people abroad, mostly Indian, because most of the company, most of the most of the hospitals that are in cahoots with doctors here are, are are based in India. Most of the lab, most of the lab owners too are even Indians themselves in Nigeria. I mean, it's it's so bad that even if you go to the airport, some doctors have told me that they, they will give doctors leaflet and tell them there's a leaflet at the airport. They don't ask them to say, oh, you can you can make referral and you get this cut from whatever we are we charging this, this patient. So some of the referrals that are done about to India and other places, yeah, perhaps are probably not, not necessary because they don't have an incentive to make a lot of money. And since there's a lot of money involved in okay. treating some of these um, 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 ailments, because some of these are very serious ailments that also requires um, are, are expensive to uh, treat. So there's an incentive for them to uh, 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 do that. Yeah, you are quite right when you say that. Mm. Probably, I mean, and, and I would go ahead and say that um, because one of the hospital, Fidik um, Life Care um, Hospital, actually gave me a contract that also involved that they are going to pay me ten, five uh, percent, or ten up to twenty percent if I give, if if I refer somebody for treatment abroad. So wow. yeah, it does quite happen. quite shocking, quite shocking information there, Nicholas. Mm -hmm. uh, lastly, before we let you go, what's the government or health bodies saying about this at the moment? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> I mean, it's it's quite it's quite funny, and this is one of the things that also um, have discouraged. Yeah, I mean, investigative journalists in Nigeria. I, I can tell you for a fact, if this if the kind of investigation that I've done had been done by the BBC. We would have seen government officials running from pillar to post trying to do something about it. But because, yeah, it's a local reporter, it's a Nigerian reporter writing for a Nigerian newspaper, they just say, oh, he will make a noise and, and the noise. But one thing we can assure them is that we will not let, we will not let this matter rest because Nigerians are poor Nigerians who are struggling to raise money for, for health care. Millions of people, if you go on social media, you see people begging 
I mean, every day you go on street media, you see people asking for, for money to be donated. People have set up GoFundMe accounts for people to be treated. And such people are being stolen from. And yet the government doesn't think that this is important. I mean, it's, it's, it's quite disheartening, really. But we won't stop doing what we're doing. We mm. won't. Thank you so much, uh, Nicholas, on, on that work. You said you worked on it for about two years. And uh, we do hope that the government does take action and fix the system. Yeah, I hope so too. Thank you. Anita.